Well, the suspect in the stabbing death of 35-year-old Christina Lee pled not guilty to murder charges last night during his arraignment. This as the community really comes to grips with such a horrific crime. We deserve to be safe, not feel safe, but be safe in our city, in our homes. Enough is enough. Enough, enough is, is enough. enough. Enough is enough. I beg you, beg you. To bring the safety our community deserves. Now, 25 year old Asamad Nash has a long criminal history and was out on supervised release when he was accused of killing Lee. Chinatown leaders will be meeting with the mayor this morning, the NYPD and the Manhattan DA later this week, to determine what can be done to curb crime in their community. Wellington Chen, executive director of the Chinatown Partnership, will be at those meetings, and he joins us live this morning. Good morning, Wellington. Good morning. Uh, yeah, we really appreciate you being here this morning, unfortunately, on this occasion. There is a call to action from Chinatown leaders, including yourself, and I understand you're headed to a breakfast meeting with Mayor Adams this morning. So what is the message that you want to give him, and to, really to the city? Yeah, I mean, the mayor took the, uh, I'm grateful that the mayor took the initiative to invite us be, even before this incident. And I do not know, uh, to Gracie mentioned, and I do not know what the subject matter w uh, will be, but obviously needless to say, we totally wholeheartedly agree with him about safety first, uh, as you heard from the community leaders uh, at the rally. Uh, and along with what you just uh, reported earlier this morning about the need to close some of the loopholes yeah. to uh, not let the repeat offenders uh, uh, back out on the street. Well, and that brings me to that to the next question here, Wellington. You'll be meeting with the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, right, this afternoon as well. Yes. Asim and Nash, the suspect here, it's a very long criminal history, was on supervised release. So what will you be discussing with DA Bragg when it comes to bail reform? What are you looking for here? Well, along with my bit, uh, association colleagues, uh, all the business improvement district directors, we were discussing this yesterday as uh, DA Bragg's uh, team has been reaching out to all over to uh, find out uh, what are the issues and what are the solutions. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding during one of the meetings is alleged that, uh, you know, something like 285 or something in that number uh, uh, of individuals are, re are responsible for like over 80 percent of the crime in the city. So uh, we are all in agreement that the um, these repeat offenders should not be back out on the street. Mm -hmm. And whatever way it takes to uh, to deal with it, I think that's how uh, we're going to be exploring with her. Yeah, and you can hear the sound of desperation with the folks that were rallying yesterday. I mean, you witnessed one of these crimes firsthand. I mean, last year outside yes. the federal courthouse on Ward Street, the suspect in that attack wasn't charged with a hate crime. Are prosecutors, do you think, are you, do you think prosecutors are being too lenient when they're going after these suspects? Yeah, being the first hand witness in this particular case, being that you can see I'm on the lower right hand corner there, mm -hmm. and I, I literally saw the, uh, the, the, the attack. Uh, in that case, unfortunately, there, not a single word was exchanged. There was no evidence that the prosecutor can use that to prosecute as a hate crime because it, 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 there was no indication of, you know, that this is hate. However, the, 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 it's obviously a barbaric uh, action. Yeah, have you kept in touch with that victim? I was so relieved just a few days ago, finally uh, saw this young man with mm. his wife because I've been concerned over a year, whatever happened to him, uh, did he survive and uh, how is he doing and whether, you know, how he's recovering from the, the severe wound. And uh, much to my amazement, uh, he wanted to volunteer for my organization. Wow. Uh, and he, uh, yeah, and along with his wife. So I'm so grateful that yeah. uh, I, I told him I was so relieved to see him uh, because he came out and he said, you don't remember me, do you? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, because he was in the dark and I, I, I only saw a very brief moment. Right. Uh, and so he uh, he again repeated the same message that I just said earlier. He said uh, the, uh, the repeat offenders, we should mm -hmm. figure out a way to close the loopholes and not let them back out on the street. Apparently, these few individuals are committing the majority of the crime in New York City. You know, Wellington, Last week, there was a rally in Lower Manhattan about the high number of homeless shelters, specifically in the area of Chinatown. The suspect in Lee's murder is homeless. Do you know if he was or was not a member of one of those shelters? And do you believe that the recent attacks in Chinatown have to do with the increase in shelters? 
Yeah, we've been following this case since uh, we learned about it on Sunday. Uh, and so far, the, all the news reported, we have not, we cannot confirm uh, one way or the other whether this uh, individual is a resident in a nearby hotel. Mm -hmm. However, uh, as been, uh, you know, in your uh, interview with many residents mm -hmm. of the, uh, and New Yorkers, is now quite clear that this is now a very serious citywide problem as well yes. as nationwide problem. Uh, just take the case of Michelle Go, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless whether the uh, the individual that pushed him uh, is is homeless or uh, has has a stay by shelter or has a mental issue, the result is the same. So uh, we we got to do uh, you know confront this issue together. Well, where this most recent incident happened, the fifth precinct, it has the largest number. Of auxiliary offers than, other, than any other precinct in the city. Community patrols, they're ongoing. So these crimes really aren't a, about the lack of police presence. So, what do you think can be done to increase safety in Chinatown? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm very sympathetic to the law enforcement and NYPD because I, I was just talking to uh, yesterday to someone that says, I don't know how to report, deploy resources because yeah. they are random. They occur out of the blue, out of, uh, you know, some, someone will use a fist, someone you will use a can of maize, someone will, will just shove you, and someone will use a knife like I witnessed last year. Uh, and so it's so unpredictable. And so it's very, very hard. And I'm very grateful to the uh, NYPD. They did, uh, you know, especially the 5th Precinct, they deployed, uh, you know, undercover, and they work with us to distribute, uh, you know, uh, the uh, anti-hate uh, materials as well as uh, we handed out uh, the uh, the uh, whistles and the uh, personal alarms and uh, and but we, we there's a lot more need to be done all right well Wellington we appreciate you being here this morning and keep us posted on the meeting with the mayor and what comes out of it we're going to be following it very closely okay thank you stay safe right back at you